What's today, matey? That's right, it's yeah. new lizard day. <laughs> and me and little mate here and wifey are about to go on a little bit of a drive and we're gonna go pick ourselves up some new lizards. Are you excited or something? <laughs> Apparently he's really excited. He's got his snake pants on, so at least he's got reptile themed pants on today, don't ya? As well as your trucks. But yeah, we're off to go and get some new lizards. Wish us luck. The little fella has this really obnoxious toy. He loves it, he's happy, that's the main thing. But we're off to pick up these lizards now. What do we got? Uh -uh. Careful, careful. We've just gotten home. We're pretty excited, aren't we? What's in there? Uh -uh. Lizard? <laughs> Lizard? Ooh. Oh, thank you. Dada, dada, dada. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, while he's off, let's go and have a bit of a closer gander at these guys, hey? All right, little fella's down for a nap, so now Dad's free to do what he wants, and that is, of course, releasing these little beauties here into their temporary home. I will reiterate, temporary home. Uh, now, I do have a cage, you kind of can't see it because this one's here, but I've got a cage here. It's an Exoterra 45 by 45 by 90 tall tank. Um, probably not ideal. These guys won't mind it so much because they are a semi arboreal lizard, so they do like to actually spend some time up high. I've got a large water bowl, or a pretty large water bowl considering the land space in here for the bottom of the tank, so they'll be able to sit down there and soak in it easily at the size that they're at. I'm planning for these guys to be in here like tops two months, maybe just into spring potentially. And if I have to kind of tweak some things or, you know, temporarily find them a bigger house somehow, I can do that. Realistically, it'd be a pain in the bottom, but I could, if I had to actually use like one of my Kmart puppy pens and put that in the middle here as like a temporary larger housing option for them, I could rig something up doing something like that. Um, not ideally what I want to do, but I'm going to see how this rolls for now. So anyway, those are a couple of temporary options that I'm talking about here. These lizards, if you are over on Patreon or YouTube members, uh, I have actually released a video about the fact of how, how excited I am getting these lizards already. And in that video, I kind of detailed some of my plans as to what I actually plan to do. But with long story short and without giving too much away, just as of yet, they will be going outdoors. I think this is a species that is only going to really thrive outdoors. You know, these lizards here, they are going to get pretty big, very big. I think they're Australia's pretty much the largest gamut um, between these and the, the frill neck. Um, one of the reasons that I got these guys is because I can keep them outdoors locally. Obviously here on the East Coast, they are like plague proportions everywhere. They're a very common lizard. I haven't seen them so much near my house here, but they have been around the area if you really want to go and look. So, you know, they are around. The reason that I got three is I am kind of hoping for a pair. They are pretty small. So, you know, uh, Marty Bodsworth, who's the legend that hooked me up with these beautiful little lizards, um, he wouldn't guarantee sexes for me and that's completely fine. I know how sometimes that can be when you're selling reptiles, people want to have a pair or whatever and it can be a little bit dicey. You know, people might end up with two boys, two girls, whatever. I don't actually really care. If I have to move a particular animal on because they're not getting on long term, so be it. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna to try to raise these guys up. And I have kind of chosen three. Marty brought a bunch down for me to have a look at. I have chosen three just on the fact that I'm hoping that I've got a male, in particular this little guy here, or guy or girl. There's a little bit of color flushing on the chest. I know he's like minuscule, he's tiny. So who, who knows? 
I don't even know how Marty was actually keeping these guys. It could be just like what he's rubbed on, what branch he's rubbed on. It's just rubbed a bit of color on him. Who knows? I am definitely by no means a water dragon expert. I have just happened to fall in love with these lizards. Now, these are a super cheap lizard. They are not an expensive lizard, but the whole point of me getting these lizards is A, I actually really love them and I'm kind of coming around to enjoy them way more as I kind of venture down my herpetology path as far as, you know, keeping animals and stuff and seeing animals in the wild. I do see these guys everywhere, but they are just awesome, awesome lizards. They are almost like Australia's version of an iguana in a sense. You know, they've got those real brilliant crests, awesome coloration in particular, the males, even the females, they get some awesome greens and creams and things through them. Um, and to be honest, I think they're one of Australia's most underrated pet lizard. And I kind of want to show you guys how cool these things are long term. And the enclosure that I've kind of got designed in my head and, and I've got so many ideas in my head. The enclosure that I've got designed in my head, I really want to make it an art piece. So I know that a lot of people do Avery style enclosures and there's some ideas out there that I've seen where I, I kind of want to do like a, a miniature Avery slash lizard pit type situation, but also make it look natural. That's the idea anyway. So yeah, I'm going to have to toy around with these guys. But anyway, without any further ado, let's have a little gander at these guys because I've waffled on here for, according to the camera, over four minutes. And I know that I can be a bit of a ranter. So let's have a little look at these guys and I'll transfer them into, as I keep saying, their little temporary home back here. So I'm not gonna get the bigger one out now. We'll get one of the little ones out. It's a little bit hard considering I've got three lizards in one box. That's my own doing there. So here's a little lizard here. Little water dragon. They're tiny little tackers. Look how long their tails are. One of only, the, the one of Australia's agamets that can actually drop their tail, you know, if they've been bitten or threatened by a predator and it can actually like regrow a little bit. So a lot of the big males that you see out there, they tend to kind of only have like a half a tail and they've got like a little little nub growing back. Hopefully we never, never have to experience that, uh, but it is entirely possible. But yeah, this is whoop, one little wiggly fella here, or hopefully a lady. I'm, I'm hoping these, I'm hoping for a trio, but you know, it's all a punt, it's all a punt. But I figured for $30 a lizard, because that's how cheap they are, I'll take a little bit of a punt. Okay. She's holding on one of the big slabs of bark that I've popped into there. It's a very simple setup. There's basically just a boreal branches. I will show it to you, but there's a boreal branches. There's a bit of a universal rock background. So they've got a bit of usable space in here. A bit of cork bark down low if they feel like hiding. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there and obviously upgrade things a lot more as these guys progress. I'm expecting these guys to grow reasonably quickly. I, f I figure if I keep them indoors and actually you know, spend a bit of time with them over the next few months too, hopefully that'll get them started to be a bit habituated to myself and we'll see how they go from that. This is one of the other smaller animals that I've got here. Um, again, hoping it's another little female. Man, I can't get over how long these tails are. There was actually a point where I hatched a whole bunch of these guys out when I was working with Sydney Wildlife and we were using my incubator just to hatch all the reptile eggs we were collecting from around the area and then re-releasing them. And I got to release, I think it was like 14 of these guys back into the scrub, which was pretty good, pretty good going. I do actually have another funny uh, water dragon story while I'm on it. Me and a friend, we were out herping late one night in a local area and uh, <laughs> I kid you not, a reptile egg was rolling towards us. This was on kind of like a, uh, how do I say it? It was on like a main street type road. That's a bit of a closed road. And we were going up a hill and there was a little reptile egg rolling down towards us. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That is a reptile egg. No idea what's inside of it. Let's see if we can hatch this. And uh, you know, we'll come back and release it sort of thing. And <laughs> I put this reptile egg in my top pocket for about, you know, another four or five hours. And when I'd gotten home, I quickly set it up and put it in the incubator. And yeah, a few days later, hatched out a little water dragon. And I was like, oh, there you go. Took it back up there and released him anyway. But yeah, such a cool little species. I'm gonna put this little fella, or hopefully a female, into this tank just before. I really don't wanna stress these guys any longer than I have to. Pop you into there. There you go, little guy. That first one's just gone right up underneath the heat, which I'll show you in a tick. But we'll get this third one out. This is the one that I'm pretty excited about. It was the biggest in the tub that Marty brought along. And got a little bit of poop on his back. 
but I am hoping, I'll see if I can show it to you guys. I'm hoping that there's a little bit of red flushing through there means that this potentially could be a little boy. <laughs> I haven't been this excited about little lizards for so long. And I love these little things, man. You gotta be kidding me. You tell me that's not a cool lizard. This guy is gorgeous. I am so stoked, honestly. So these guys are omnivores. They're gonna eat bugs. They're gonna eat all sorts of bugs, wide variety of bugs. They're gonna eat a lot of plant matter too. So I might even have to up my gardening game things. So I've got a few omnivores here now. And actually, whoops, sorry buddy. Sorry buddy, let's get you in your tank. And might have to up my gardening game and actually uh, start doing a bit of veggieing myself so I can actually provide my lizards some food. Just like I'm already growing my own bugs, maybe I should start looking at the growing my own salads too. You wanna go up there, bud? Go on. Here you go. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I'll just quickly uh, sit back here. This tank's in a horrible position, but it's pretty much the only space that I'll be able to overwinter them without my son getting into them. He's obsessed with the reptiles now, if you can't tell. But yeah, here's a quick look at this tank. Pretty basic setup. We've got heat, UV, and an LED as per standard on top here. You can already see that little one having a bit of a bask, warming itself up. And then down here, we can see these little guys getting towards the bottom there. Now, if needed, I will black out this side too, or put a piece of something in between there, just so then these guys can't see all the other lizards, because uh, that's not really on. I don't like doing that as much as possible, especially for new introductions. And yes, I know, quarantine has definitely gone out the window here. It is a state of affairs. Uh, but I don't really have anywhere else that I can do this safely. So it is what it is. Do as I say and quarantine your lizards. Don't do as I do. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, this is a little, little temporary setup and it is kind of fluid. If I need to change it up, I can. Uh, but hopefully this will do them for the time being. Uh, obviously being small uh, lizards, they should be okay in here temporarily for maybe just a couple of months but i'm basically going to start buying bits and pieces i've already been looking at everything and piecing things together and costing it out so yeah there we go well yeah there we go guys just a little quick look in quick little unboxing per se it's only a very short video i know i am going to highlight these guys way more in the future because i really do want to kind of push the fact that these guys are awesome lizards that are not very high in initial cost, but their care and upkeep is probably what keeps that cost low is because they're not for everybody. Especially since most people in Australia have access to be able to keep these sorts of animals outdoors. I think this is a species that does really need to be kept outdoors long term. Uh, I mean, there's no reason you can't keep them indoors, but just the size of the enclosure is just not gonna be as practical as something that potentially you could make outdoors. Now, I will quickly say the outdoor enclosure that I have planned isn't gonna be like a bank breaking enclosure. But that being said, it'll be a pretty decent size enclosure. And even the outdoor enclosure that I have planned now is gonna be a temporary enclosure for them to grow up in for potentially like the next couple of years, something like that. And then from there, I've got a bigger plan again. So. Don't take it as gospel when I do build this enclosure. I will reiterate the fact that this again will be a temporary enclosure, but it'll serve a purpose and I'll swap some things around. And anyway, we'll get into that in the future, hey? But yeah, for now, if you like the video, drop it a like down below, drop it a comment. Let me know what you think about water dragons, whether you like them or not, or let me know what sort of underrated species you know of that you want to see out there a bit more commonly. Doesn't mean I'm getting them, but I think I'm doing my due course here. But what's an Australian species or an overseas species of lizard or reptile in general that goes underappreciated for the beauty that they actually are? Drop your comments down below. Also, make sure to go and check me out over on Teespring. I've got loads of different merch up there. And if you want to support the channel even further, get early access videos and such, you can go and check me out over on Patreon. And I have now started up YouTube memberships as well if you want to do it that way. All right, until next time, guys, take it easy. I'll catch you then.